You are listening to Keith Price's Curtain Call. Well, we are back again. Yes, this is part two of our Fabo conversation for those of you who are serious theater heads. <laughs> You're not just there for the lights and sounds of of just the shows and the stars because all of those people that are standing on that stage doing what they do cannot do any of that without the people that we are about to start talking about these nominees right now. And so here we are now getting ready to, we're going to plow right through these because a we're late. It's late and I got to edit and I'm tired, (laughs) but I can't help it because we are back again with my (laughs) fabulous, fabulous guests, (laughs) Greg Allen is here with me, author, writer, director, actor, producer, bon vivant de theater. He is he is here to share his experiences, share his shade, which is what we really want to hear. We want the shade more so likely about what's going on in theater. Hi, baby. How you doing? I am good. You're right. It's late. I'm tired. All right. But we love uh, theater, so we stay it up. We do. We do it for the art. <laughs> And of course, we cannot do this without our young protege, who's, you know, yes, he's younger than us, but he ain't as young as it was when we all started doing this thing. So I like to say, my next guest has lived, Puff Puff, ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) influencer, Broadway lover, Broadway bon vivant, actor, writer, Mr. Paul Winkler. Hi, darling. How are you? Oh, good. How are you doing? I'm fabulous, but I'm glad that we are here now at the point to where we go, we're getting down to the meat and potatoes. This is the stuff that really makes Broadway freaking buzz, right? You cannot do a show if you don't have somebody working on your costumes. You cannot do a show if you don't have a set to go to. You cannot, you know what I'm saying? There's no, it ain't nobody wrote the music what you singing. Hello. <laughs> so it's like, this is our opportunity to I think in in a way show our appreciation that that we have for these folks and at the same time get a good kiki in because you know sometimes it's these shows that make it, it there's something about a show who when it walks away at getting everything including things like the technical awards that's when you know the show has been a, a hit from top to bottom so mm. we are going to start off right now with the best scenic design of a play okay Dots, appropriate. Dots, an enemy of the people. Derek McLean, Pearly Victorious. David Zinn, Jaja's African hair braiding. David Zinn, stereophonic. All right. Um, so if y'all don't know, because this is kind of strange, but Dots is a company. It's not mm-hmm. a person. Okay. So, mm. And that's also a trend where certain categories, actually even for best score, but they weren't yeah. nominated... What um Water for Elephants, the score is by Pig Pen Theater Company. Yeah. Couldn't yeah. tell you what that means, but okay. What um, else? <laughs> but what here we else? are. Here we are. Well, I have seen Pearly and Jaja's. And Jaja has an amazing set w- with this revolving uh beauty shop. Although I feel like for scenic design, you know, who did get uh whoever it is that did the scenes for Mary Jane has he does something or they do something with this set that was just like, oh, my God. All right. Well, how you doing? Like, look at you on the Broadway giving me some diversity and some fabulousness. How an entire scene changes by a hydraulic. So, again, I, I would say Jaja's just because I really enjoyed seeing that beauty shop come from where it came out of and how they did it. Um, Pearly Victorious. Nope. I, I didn't I didn't I don't know what. They did. It was, I, it well, was... it, it's not good until the last scene at the very, very end, because then it becomes the church and it's grand. And the right, rest right. of the show is like, you know, a small house like you're, and you're, it's you're not very exciting. Kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, great. <laughs> you know, simple storytelling, good for the budget. Right. That's what we're saying. That's, that's a good choice for the budget. <laughs> um. David Zinn nominated twice in this category, but three times this season, um, which I love David Zinn from SpongeBob, SpongeBob and later. I mean, it's just a total icon. Um, uh, I will say 
there's he's not the only person who's in multiple categories or nominated at the same time. It's right. like, is there anyone else we could hire? In terms <laughs> of like, I know they y'all like have your friends, but they could have put Grey House in because it was a great horror set. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, let's I'm going to go at... with appropriate. Appropriate set is so freaking cool. And mm-hmm. you watch, I don't want to give it away. Mm-hmm. Um, the set's right. a big don't part people... of the play if you decide to go see it. Okay. But a lot happens with this set. Let's just say that. Okay. All right. And how many dots will be coming up on stage if they win? That's true. We don't know what it is. <laughs> It'll be crazy. All right. Let's go to best scenic design of a musical. AMP. Sure. Featuring Tatiana Kovbeck <laughs> for The Outsiders. Kovegian. Uh, Kovegian. Robert Brill and Peter Nagari, Nagri, Nagrini. 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 House Kitchen. Takashi Kata, Water for Elephants. David Corins, Here Lies Love. Ricardo Hernandez, Peter Nag- Nagrini, mm-hmm. Lampica. Tim Hatley, Finn Ross, Back to the Future. Sc- Tom Scott Cabaret. Mm, now, with scenic I'm gonna design, do design something very car, weird. I'm going to okay. say Back to the Future. I was I'm just thinking say of... it because there's a lot going on on that stage for that show. And from all the other ones that I have seen, I'm just like, no, I'm going to throw it to them on this one. Well, now to go back to the trend that you were saying, Paul, about uh-huh. having to reconvert the entire theater twice, uh, two twice. twice. in two this category. Yeah. Yeah. With Here yeah. Lies Love and Cabaret. What's interesting about Cabaret is there is no set. So there's just a round stage in the center, but they have like the audience behind that, which would normally be the stage, but they also build a mezzanine, which seems like a really big thing to do for a show. Um, So I liked that part better than the show itself. But um, do you consider that the scenic design or do you consider that like construction of the house? I don't know. That's the weird thing um, with this immersive theater. That's really weird where you place that now. I right. Don't, right. No. Because Here Lies like, Love. Here Lies Love. Here lies love. They right. just ripped it all up and made a dance floor. Right. And then they got the the mezzanine spots up and high. And then you got the, I. it was a lot. It was a lot. But I mean, is that yeah. consistent? It was too that much scene design. <laughs> Yeah. 90 minutes yeah. I was old and I sat in the mezzanine I'm like I ain't dance on that floor <laughs> well, I will watch y'all from up here for someone who saw Here Lies Love off Broadway and then saw it on Broadway mm-hmm. I don't think it was as effective and I don't think they used the space but that's more of a directorial thing because mm-hmm. uh, I feel like they just put the same production onto a bigger platform but platform i was when i saw here lies love (laughs) off broadway i thought it would be appropriate for studio 54 Mm. which Mm, to me would have been you know especially since amelda marcos loved studio 54 you know what i mean like it would have been the perfect connection but what do i know i don't know anything instead we got days of wine and roses days of wine and roses (laughs) oh well but i think for this particular uh, scenic design you know, Hell's Kitchen, I, I mean, it was a lot of projections. Um, a lot. And that's why there's two people, because it's scenic and, and then projection. projections. Yeah, because they don't have elephants. a category for those folks. <laughs> I know, right? But Water for Elephants, I mean, you know, I, you know, I mean, the circus theme was cute, and, <laughs> the, you know, the poles and everything was nice, and the white tent, and, you know, it was cute, but it didn't pop for me. So, honestly, I feel like Back to the Future is going to be the winner because, again, that ding dang car flies over that audience. Come on, can't can't be mad at the flying car. It's like bang bang. Betty Buckley going up on the wheel over the audience (laughs) from Cat. Same theater. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to Betty Buckley. Hey, girl, how you doing, Miss Betty? I'm um, seeing you in May, Miss Betty, at, down at Joe's Pub. Oh, I love her so much. She's so sweet. Anywho, back to best costume design of a play. Didi Ait, appropriate. Mm-hmm. Didi Ait, Jaja's African hair braiding. Enver, oh, Shakartosh. Shakar, sh- or ch- chakar, Chakartosh. Yes, for well, stereophonic. Stereophonic. Amelia Sosa, Pearly Victorious, David Zinn, an enemy of the people, once again. Mm. Huh. Well, 
What do you I mean, say, he, Paul? he does have the he has three nominations, so <laughs> percentage wise, he is something's got to come for him, <laughs> right? He's got to get and something. then you also DD is twice in this category, so that's pretty fantastic as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember the costumes from Harley to be honest, so that wouldn't was... be on my list. I mean, Amelia Sosa, yes, because he's right. talented, big, big date, super talented. Um, right. But I, I think think... I picked Pearly just because it was a little more period, and that's the only thing that popped in my head from this. Well, that's list. usually what the voters go for, and right. we'll talk about that in the next category. But it's like, yeah. oh, if it's if it's period, they got to get the nomination, you know? right. right? Well, but... I don't know. I, who wh- who's your choice? Are you saying Pearly? I'm saying Pearly. How about you? Holly. I'm just yeah. gonna go with Davidson. Davidson, enemy of the people, <laughs> gay <Well>, icon. I, <laughs> I'm gonna go for Jaja's African hair braiding. Oh, good. I loved it because it was giving me something that we don't get to see on a Broadway stage. Let's see if that saves the day, and then it'll also be something of, to check the box for MTC. Yay! <laughs> All right, best costume design of a musical. Dee Dee. Again, Again. <laughs> TDI at Hell's Kitchen, Linda Cho, The Great Gatsby, David Israel, Reynoso, Water for Elephants, Tom Scott, Cabaret, and Paul Taswell, Sufs. Hmm. If we go period pieces, there's Sufs for you. And there's Great Gatsby. Gatsby, there's great Gatsby. I thought this may be the only thing that Gatsby that might get. get. You're right. I mean, I, don't I think didn't see wind. it. I didn't see it because nobody's throwing me a discount. And I have to say this season, shout out to TDF. I have not paid much money at all in tickets. Mm -hmm. But that one's not on any discount list. So I have not seen Gatsby. I Um, I would like to see it. uh, Not to hate on the show anymore, but Cabaret (laughs) maybe had the ugliest costumes I've ever seen on stage. So I'm going to say no to that one. (laughs) I literally was like, I want to throw up. Like, this is hard to watch. (laughs) <laughs> yeah no yeah no well what does um, that leave you <laughs> I don't know huh. I don't know what do you got do you think Linda Cho I say I, Linda I say Linda Cho I'm going to probably say Paul Taswell for Suffs okay. he's you know that seems out of all of those costumes, those are the ones that he probably had to work the hardest to try to recreate and make work. Oh, well, good for him. Shout out, Paul. <laughs> Next, we've got best lighting design of a play. Isabel Bird, an enemy of the people. Amit Kara Rashakar. No, no Sh- Sh- the- Sh- Chandra Shaker. Chandra Shaker. Chandra Shaker. That's a Works great, that's a long name. Prayer for the French Republic. Gian Chang, Stereophonic, Jane Cox, Appropriate, Natasha Katz, Grey House. Mm, Natasha this Katz. This is her 19th nomination, I believe. For, for Natasha? Yeah. And well, she, won, she, gets, she gets my vote. She won last year for <laughs> um, Sweeney Todd. Yeah. For the musical, Best Lighting of a Musical. So she did freaking awesome things in Grey House, guys. I can't even, like, there was stuff going on. I'm like, how did they just do that with those lights? It was, she's good. I wish that show would have run longer just for the technical aspects. And this is why we're in these categories. Some shows technically can just blow you away. Mm -hmm. And that's what I remembered about Grey House from almost a year ago. (laughs) Nice. How about you, Paulie? I would say stereophonic. Mm. Which, you know, could sweep anyway, so. You think eh, they do a lot know. of practical lighting? There's some cool things that happen in there with some lights. So mm-hmm. yeah, there's there's um, yeah. Well, uh, Natasha Katz gets my vote just because I love her. But also yeah. too, I heard a lot of great things about Grey House before you, you know, told us about the stuff too that people were like, "Are you fucking kidding me? Like, what's going on with that? Like, what? How does she do that?" So I hope that that will translate into something great, even though. Pretty much most of these plays we're not going to be able to see in the next couple of months anyway. So good luck with that. (laughs) (laughs) How about now we're going to go to the best lighting design of a musical. Brandon Sterling Baker, Illinois. 
Isabel Bird, Cabaret, Natasha Katz, Hell's Kitchen, Bradley King and David Bengali, Wadi for Elephants, Bri uh, Brian McDer McDevitt, and mm. Hannah S. Kim, The Outsiders. Mm. You I know, I think... Inside cabaret. <laughs> Uh, they were fine. They weren't, I wouldn't say they were memorable, but they were fine. You know, because it's such a bare stage, mm -hmm. um, it relies on lighting. Okay. Because there is literally no set. Um, I could have used a, a chair or something, but it's just <laughs> a bare stage. Um, so lighting is, is pretty important. And I think it's important too, because the way it's designed, uh -huh. it's, they have to re-rig the whole uh, theater. So I think for the uh, a work that the set and lighting did, um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they got it for that. Who knows? Who knows? Although um, I will say Natasha Katz giving you the elevator in uh, mm -hmm. the, the Broadway, what is it, the Plaza, whatever the name of the hotel, Manhattan Plaza. Manhattan Plaza. The, yeah. the moments of being in the elevator, like, oh, that's cute how she did that. Of course, I'm a thoroughly modern Millie person. Give me an elevator you can jump in and tap in. <laughs> but whatevs. Um, Wait, can I, I tell you a, a story about that? So the quickly. elevator in Thoroughly Modern Millie, mm -hmm. they um, spent 90% of their budget on it. And because they couldn't figure out how to do it without it looking like going crazy. Uh -huh. And then when they presented it to the audience for the first preview, people were like, okay, whatever. That's great. Nice. <laughs> All that money they spent for nothing. Nothing. Yeah. But again, um, you know, Natasha Katz did really interesting things with the lights. Um, I, in Water for Elephants, there were really great lighting moments, like that big number where the guy talks about killing Paul Nolan and then he goes through that whole sequence and it's the lights and then the cameras and then the things and the flashing and all this other stuff for him to not kill him. <laughs> five, five to seven minutes that we'll never get back in theater. Um but it was very fascinating. I was intrigued. I was like, I was ready for the moment. And then when we got to the moment, it was like, ah, oh, okay. I'm sure there's going to be some other way that we get the villain of the show. And I was right. We did. Um, but I think it's probably going to be Hell's Kitchen. Natasha Katz is I'm going already... to go with Illinois. I'm going Illinois on that one. I like what they did with lighting. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to move on now. To best sound design of a play. Justin Ellington, Stefana Bolabrella, Jaja's African Hair Braiding, mm -hmm. Leah Gelp, Mary Jane, Tom Gibson, Grey House, Brady Poor, and Will Pickens, Appropriate, Ryan Rummery, Stereophonic. Mm. What do you think? Well, now we're into the area where my niece is in sound on Broadway, so All I right. know. I, I know some of these people through her. So I'm mm -hmm. like, ooh, I should really go with her friends. But I got to go with Tom Gibbons and what he did in Grey House. Okay. I think it's going to be Ryan for Stereophonic. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Well, it would be really great because um, Grey House, this would be an opportunity for it to come back and tour. That would be really hot. Um, but I think it might be possibly... I want to say maybe appropriate. I mean, I didn't... You know, well, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, it seems as if there was a lot of things that were going on in that show that sound was also very helpful to do, to help tell that mm -hmm. story. And mm -hmm. also, too, looking at these things as elements to help tell the story, it may be a different way to approach it. So then Tom Gibbons and Grey House probably should be the bigger winner because that was also dependent upon a lot of stuff as well, Correct. Correct. Well, you, and you just don't know how these yeah. people vote, though. You don't know what the right. voters are looking at. Right. Well, whenever let's see. The, the title of something is about the like the light in the piazza, they won for lighting design, stereophonic. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right. Okay. It's happened many times. I'm not making this up. <laughs> I love it. Oh, best sound design of a musical. <laughs> ML Dog and Cody Spencer, Here Lies Love. Mm -hmm. Kai Harada, Mary Lee, we roll along. Nick Lidster for autograph, cabaret. Mm -hmm. Gareth Owen, Hell's Kitchen. Cody Spencer, The Outsiders. Mm. I don't know. 
this feels like one of those things where Hell's Kitchen will probably get it. Yeah. Sometimes I'll just throw and, you know, mm -hmm. all the bones. I mean, was the sound good for Here Lies Love? Let me think back to when that show was open. Back in what, February? Yeah. They had a DJ there. Yeah, like, I don't I know. I thought it was okay. On. I actually think it's, it could have been better, but. As you I know, get the... older, I can't always hear everything on stage. I'm like, man, <laughs> why does it sound like this? I heard every word in Merrily. I heard every <laughs> syllable. I heard everything. So okay. that's what I'm going to judge. By. <laughs> no dun, 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 dun. I love it. I love it. All right. But we'll see. We shall see. I, I feel like it'll probably be Hell's Kitchen. So what are you going to do? All right. Best. Wait, wait, hold on. I just I lost the order. Hold on. Hold on. What's next? We're best doing... direction of a play. Wait, best... not on his no, 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 no. Uh, no. Oh, you uh, want to go choreography? Design... Yes, most choreography. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Annie B. Parsons, Here Lies Love, Camila mm -hmm. A. Brown, Hell's Kitchen, Ryan Copperman and Jeff Copperman, The Outsiders, Justin Peck, Illinois, Jesse Robb, and Shana Carroll, Water for Elephants. Mm. Um, there's a very obvious winner in this category. Justin Peck. And he's already <laughs> and they, won before. <laughs> and they did not put him in the director, so I think he's got to win this one as well. Mm. The Casey Nicola effect, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I well at least we were right about Casey last year because we were wrong about pretty much everything else last year. <laughs> <laughs> some some years it's just not for us. No. Um, wh wh where are you at, Mister? Are you saying Justin Peck as well, Paul? I'm yeah. saying I'm gonna I'm gonna go left and say Camille Brown, Camille a. Brown. Mm -hmm. She's she's proven that she can do it. She's proven that she's done it. Um. I would like to see her get a little bit more recognition. It would be one of those historic moments too to have a another woman of color finally win. Uh, a Didn't Tony she for win Best before? Am I wrong? No, she was nominated. She was nominated for director. She was and nominated twice. Mm -hmm. For this yeah. once, on, not once on the silent. Um, the student show. Oh shit! Ah, uh, it's gonna. It was at it was at MTC Choir Boy. Oh. Oh yeah, oh, she did the choir choreography. Boy. That was choir. so good. So yes, yeah, like so she loved Choir Boy. She's and then she's also doing um, the Soul Train musical that's gonna probably eventually get here. But they did it out west. And she, she was, was part of nominated that for Color Girls and mm -hmm. then direction as well for Color Girls. Mm -hmm. And then you write Choir Boy before that. Well, so she is. I would love to see her get it just because I adore her, and she's the only one I actually know on the list. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think it might be Justin Peck who's going to walk away with it, though. Oh, but that is that is the choreography. And now going to... Best book. Best book of a musical. What was the best book of a musical? Best book of a musical. Best musical. book of a musical. Okay. Christoph, Christoph Diaz, Hell's Kitchen. Becca Burnsetter, The Notebook. Adam Rapp and Justin Levine, The Outsiders. Shania Tab, stuff. No, no Shane, Rick Shana Tab. Shana Tab. Shana, Shana Tab. Dead right. <laughs> Rick Ellis, Water for Elephants. Hmm. Well, if it, the trend happens, it'll be Hell's Kitchen. But I think? haven't seen Outsiders yet, but I'm hearing a lot of good stuff about how they adapted this. Mm -hmm. So perhaps. It's very interesting that Adam Rapp is a co-writer because he's like a, a if you don't know, it's Anthony Rapp's brother. He's a okay. decorated playwright. Mm -hmm. um, so just to tell a play, playwright to be like, oh, you're going to co-write this seems um, strange. But, mm -hmm. you know, this is the trend, as I said. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, because you said, I simply cannot do it alone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling... Because everyone's jocking him, it's going to be Christopher Diaz. But I have the feeling that Shayna Taub may be the dark horse in that mix. Because again, not since uh, Hades Town, right? Will we get the book, best musical that got the got the book of the musical as well as the best original score? 
So mm-hmm. she she has her an opportunity to be the next person besides what's her name to do that. Mm-hmm. Who's the director for Hades Town again? I forgot her name. Just went right out of my head. Rachel. Rachel Chafkin. Chafkin. So she's got an opportunity to do a Rachel Chafkin with this particular piece. And the way that people are like, you know, going behind it again, women empowerment. You know, last year it was about the, the diversity of color, and this year it might be diversity of women. So we'll see. So well, we'll- you know, it would be remarkable and not surprising if in direction categories they they went to the men, but you know. I know, because there's seven <laughs> are women of the ten. Right. Yeah. Get out of here. That's crazy. Oh my yeah. god. All right. Well, let's look at best original score, music and lyrics written for the theater. Love how they add that because it's not about a musical. Mm-hmm. It can be a they play, had to change yeah. it at some point. Yeah, because yeah. of those plays with music, you know. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Let's not even talk about the season where there is no musicals. Okay, <laughs> um, Adam Gettle, Days of Wine and Roses, David Byrne, and Fat Boy Slim. Here lies love. Um, and I don't know why they ca- they say it like this, but Jamestown Revival, which I guess is a band, mm-hmm. Jonathan Clay and Zach Chance, and Justin Levine, The Outsiders, Will mm-hmm. Butler, Stereophonic. Dana Tob stuffs. Hmm. Uh, okay, I don't want to vote for Adam Gettle because he's a MAGA Republican crazy. And this mm-hmm. show started on January 6th, just saying it's queep. Wow. Yeah, no, Ooh. no, no, not him. Um, I know he's very talented. Obviously, I'm a big fan of Light in the Piazza, but um, I think it's very controversial that David Byrne and Fatboy Slim were nominated for Here Lies Love. Not that the score is not bad. Mm-hmm. It's because David Byrne specifically did not want to have live musicians at all in mm-hmm. the show. That's right. And the show was protested. And they said, no, we're going to do recorded because it's a karaoke musical. All yeah, this. No, yes. uh-uh. Nope. Yeah. Nope. So... You're going to pay the union, honey. <laughs> but he won't win. I'm going to just no, say because of that. Absolutely he's not. Gonna get not. It. Um, I don't know. Maybe The Outsiders. Hmm. Uh, but oh, and Will Butler nominated for score. Uh, and that's a rarity when the rest are musicals. But, you know, good for him. But he wrote all original songs for that. It sounds very much like. It just came off a Fleetwood Mac album, is what you're mm-hmm. hearing, all of his original yeah. songs. I'm pulling for Suffs on this one. It just yeah. feels like mm-hmm. good Americana musical. Mm-hmm. She stayed in the period. She uh, she stayed true to, you know, I, I, I would like to see her win this one. Well, all okay. right. I think she, it's a good chance that she might do it. She may have a, a Rachel Chafkin kind of exploration and now we go to best orchestrations timio andres illinois will butler justin craig stereophonic justin levine matt hankley and jamestown revival again the outsiders Mm -hmm. tom kitt and adam blackstone hell's kitchen jonathan tunick merrily we roll along which he did Um, years ago so wait 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 yeah because i have this written down as well so he did the original orchestrations for the show when it opened in the eighties, but it wasn't he wasn't nominated, only Sondheim was nominated. But these orchestrations are from the 30 year ago 94 revival of Merrily We Roll Along off Broadway. So I mean, is this considered a revival of orchestrations? I know. <laughs> Best revival of orchestrations, Jonathan Tudor. Congratulations. Because because then he could also win that for Sweeney Todd. <laughs> <laughs> right, literally. Yeah, that's a little... I feel like they didn't know that well, when they you. gave him that. So again, <laughs> so just you saying that to me has helped narrow the choice down. It'll probably be Tom Kitt and Adam Blackstone for Hell's Kitchen. Although... Mm. I, I didn't see a lot of extra orchestrations per se because it sounded basically like the pop album. But, I mean, you know, they did their best to make it work. I think he should have won it for, Tom Kitt should have won it for um, SpongeBob. Did he do SpongeBob? No. Yeah, yeah. he did. He did part of he SpongeBob. Did. And I Aren't love what he did with SpongeBob. now orchestrations is also mm-hmm. vocal arrangements, or am I getting that wrong? They're putting the two together. No, it's different. It's just it's the music. Different. Different. Because, there's, okay. because some shows don't have those, you know, best, uh, the arranger or stuff. A lot of times, though, those people are working with composers who are not 
like it's Dolly Parton or something and mm. they're really not the composers that you think they are right. and so they're literally writing the score for them um but Tom Kidd often does that too cuz he's yeah. extremely talented he's genius now like he's a total genius Will Butler and Justin Craig for Stereophonic this is the first time a play is nominated for best orchestrations mm -hmm. so well if it winds up winning yeah. If it winds up winning, there's going to be a lot of angry people in that category. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say, because I know I would be mad. All right. And now we're round to the last big rounds. We've got Best Direction of a Play. Daniel Aukin, Stereophonic, Anne Kaufman, Mary Jane, Penny Leon, Pearly Victorious, Lila Nugbauer, Appropriate, yeah. Whitney White, Jaja's African Hair Braiding. Mm. Uh, I didn't think Kenny did a brilliant job with Pearly. I didn't think he had to work that hard to direct Pearly, but that's just me. But, and I like Kenny. I think he's, uh, you know, one of the icons mm -hmm. of the stage. But he's got a new um, play coming out home. Keep an eye mm, on that one. Okay. So, yes. All right. I'd like a woman to win this, please. Mm. Okay. Well, I would love to see Whitney White. I would love to see Whitney White get it. Because I really... Loved Jaja's African hair braiding. I've I seen... would like Lila for appropriate. Yeah, that mm -hmm. would be cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, let's well, see. Well, we'll see. We shall see. But I uh, shout out Whitney girl because I met her too. She's fabulous. All right. And now for the last one of the evening, best direction of a musical. Maria Friedman, Merrily We Roll Along, Michael Greif, Hell's Kitchen, Lee Silverman, Suffs, Jessica Stone, Water for Elephants, Dania Tamor, The Outsiders. Mm. So there's one guy in this category, which this is that almost happened. never happens. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, it's remarkable. Um, mm -hmm. And there were even other female directors this season, they just weren't nominated. Um, I think it's a pretty obvious winner, though. Merrily, we roll along. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He took yeah. this piece that for decades people went, nobody can fix it, and she did. Like, and she did. Well, honey, what's brilliant is this show was like revived. This is like the production she did like eight years ago, mm -hmm. right? And then they were like, oh, you know what? What if we star fucked it and brought it to Broadway? <laughs> <laughs> it worked. Um, Jessica Stone. She just came off of doing Kimberly Akimbo. Mm -hmm. Closed one show, opens another. Mm. Um, I just don't think it's Michael's year. Yeah, but uh, you know, anything's mm. possible. But it I think it's going to be Maria. Well, I hope that as we get closer and closer to this date, and we get to see things, if there's anything else we want to do as an addendum, we should come back and and add to it or change. But for the most part. That is the Tonys. Those are the folks that are nominated. These are the people that are, you know, working eight shows a week to bring us all the things that we love to see on the big Broadway show, on the big stages. And on June 16th at Lincoln Center, it will be Arietta DeBose kicking it off for all of us with, what is it, streaming for free on Pluto, mm -hmm. the first Before. act one for act one. And mm -hmm. then the rest is going to be on CBS at 8 p.m. And Paramount Plus. Well and Paramount Plus for the subscribers. So again, I am looking forward to yet another fabulous season. I'm glad this season is finally over because I don't think I could stand seeing another musical open just for that, like, you know, like the last three weeks, it was just like every other day. A new every musical. day. Oh. So we are now slowed down and we have given ourselves the option. But again, uh, thank you guys both for, you know, <laughs> sitting up late with me to talk all this foolishness that we do talk to because we do love the show. We do, we love the theater. We really do. And any way that we can support it, even if we're being shady about it, we're still going to support it because that means that there's jobs in an industry that needs to have jobs. And so, you know, someone who works front of house as much as I do, I'm always thankful for a good show. <laughs> You're like, what am I going to Huh? Not one of the theaters that you're at. I know, sadly, my theater is. <laughs> she, she's not known for the long run. So <laughs> and and your and your other theater turns them over on purpose. Exactly. So you're an MTC. That's right. So you know, I'm I'm fortunate that way. <laughs> I, 
I get to see lots of things new. There you go. <laughs> but again, um, I'm running your websites and stuff underneath the uh, the Chirons that are flashing across for the uh, folks watching this on YouTube or anything else. Um, but again, you want to say, tell me where these folks can find you, how they can look you up and hang out with you and get more of your insight into the theater. <laughs> Talk to me, Greg. Um, I'm go oh, ahead. Paul. Greg. No, 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 Paul, go. Age before, at, be- age before beauty. <laughs> I'm at Paul Winkler on Instagram. I'm also on Mastodon and Blue Sky, but I don't know if anyone else is. So. Okay, I was going to say, never Are heard you of it. Talking to yourself? Are you- <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> And you, yes, you, sir, Greg. Where are you? How can we find uh, you? Instagram, up? I am. I'm Gregory Allen, and then my uh, website is gregoryGAllen.com. And if you want to see my unshady side as a children's book author, it's gregsimagination.com. <laughs> see, because <laughs> she do be shady. <laughs> and of course, you can find me here, KeithPriceCurtainCall.com. You can see me on the Twitter. You can find me on the Instagram. All of that stuff is there as well as my life as a comedian. So come, come spend some time with any of us. Come find us. If you know, if you got an extra ticket, come call one of us because we'll come. We'll go see a <laughs> yeah. show. We'll go see a show if you ain't got nobody to go with you. Trust me. Um, <laughs> but again, thank you guys both for hanging out with me. Thank you so much again for giving up your time. And, you know, I'll see y'all at the theater, as they say. All right. Bye. Ciao. Bye.